You know, you are always sniffing around for value, but what some say in Europe, you wouldn't buy banks at any price. Why would you get into European banks? Well, see, that attitude is exactly what provides investment opportunity. Certainly, if you could identify a well-capitalized, high-quality bank that's going through this temporary situation, there is a price which you would pay for it. We are not believers that the European banking system is trashed for generations. Mm. It certainly faces issues. There are problems. But if we can sort through the various companies out there and look for those with good balance sheets, cost structures, loan books, and utilizing the fear in the market today, which is providing us with low prices, we will do so. That is, in essence, what value investing is all about. Uh, that is exactly what value investing is. And David, we had up on the screen, there's some of the holdings that you have in European financials. There's Credit Suisse, there's Lloyd's, um, there's uh, Banco Santander as well. Um, how did you pick them out? And and are those that may be most protected, even if you see bank runs, even if you see the capital markets shutting down? Yeah, each one of those banks is somewhat different from the next. I mean, Credit Suisse, for instance, a large part of its business is its private bank. So it's really more of an investment management company uh, that has attached to it an investment bank. And it gets treated as if it were a, you know, a lending institution that collects deposits. It's very different than that. And right now it's selling at you know, lows that we haven't even seen during the great financial crisis, despite their extremely strong capital position. Mm -hmm. And then something like a Banco Santander, now its crime is that it's based in Spain. However, less than 20% of its profits and probably you know, less than 35, 40% of its loan book is based in Spain. It has operations in the U.S. and Brazil and Mexico and in the United Kingdom. So all of these banks represent different situations, but to us, they share similar characteristics. And those characteristics are strong balance sheet, good deposit structure, or some kind of unique business attribute that will make it valuable or keep it valuable uh, when the cycle clears up, when this negative cycle clears up. David, let me just play for you um, a soundbite from my radio program yesterday where I talked with Pat Dorsey. Uh, and he shares the attitude that you object to, which is don't get into European financials. European financials, I think, uh, I would put in the, the too hard to figure out category. I'm sure some of them are cheap and will survive, but given that I can buy so many non levered businesses for nine and eight times earnings. So avoid those. Exactly. Why okay. do I want to bet on Sojan? Why do I want to bet on Deutsche Bank? It's simply, I don't think it's worth the risk. I mean, I think that's a valid point, right, David? I mean, uh, unless you are somebody like a David Harrow, uh, why buy that risk? Why even get into it? Well, each of these banks are very different, and I probably agree with what he said about Sojen and Deutsche Bank. But on the other hand, you, know, you look at a bank like Intesa Sao Paulo in northern Italy. Now, Italy is, uh, northern Italy in particular, is signified by very high savings rate, very stable asset quality, very low you know, cost ratios, et cetera. And if you could get that at you know, half a book value, uh, you know, these are banks that in normal times will trade at well over one times book value. So our view is if you could find the quality financial institutions that are positioned for the storm, mm -hmm. when the storm is over, you won't just make 10 or 20 percent. You'll probably double or triple your money on some of well, these well, investments. And, and that's what I'm getting a sense of, David, is that when, when things turn around, which at some point they will, David, I get the sense from you that, uh, you know, do you believe that you're going to get make even more returns, bigger returns than you made in the past decade? Yeah, that's exactly right. But again, you have to be selective. You need a strong capital position. You don't want to invest in a bank right now that's going to be out scrounging for capital at low prices. And the good news is we look through our portfolio and we think we are in very, very good shape in terms of the banks we own and their capital positions. Okay. That will allow them the strength to get through this crisis. And then again, when the crisis is over, we start to see an aggressive revaluation of these businesses. David, outside of European financials, where is the biggest opportunity for you? Well, again, I've been harping on this for a while, but uh, if you look at the Japanese stock market as an example, 
I mean, the Japanese stock market looked like it was showing some signs of life in the beginning of the last year, and then the earthquake tsunami hit. Mm -hmm. And they finally started to recover at the first quarter of this year, and it just has kind of gone into a little slump again. I mean, you could find some extremely good businesses. Good business is defined as rising profitability. Look at something like a Toyota Motor or a Canon. Really good companies that are selling at excessively low valuations. They have good exposure to growing Asia, very strong balance sheets, rising profit margins. I mean, I think you saw about Toyota's, the Prius is number the three selling yeah, car selling. family in the world today. Yep. So th these are good companies that are recovering and people just don't seem at all interested in Japan. Well, because it's but like- there's some really good value. Well, because, you know, it's sort of like really Japan out of all the markets out there, David, and the companies, you know, you hear about China, you hear about the growth in Brazil and Argentina and, and, and even Mexico, Mexico and elsewhere. Really, Japan is where you might see some outsized opportunities. And the reason why you have this opportunity is one must not focus on where a company is located, but one must focus on where a company makes money. And if these Japanese-based companies have good exposure to global growth, and, gr and growth in the fast growing emerging markets, which many of these companies do, and they're selling at half the price of a typical industrial business that's listed elsewhere, or maybe a third if it's listed in one of the emerging markets, there is an opportunity worth exploiting. People get all hung up on where a company is located and seem to ignore yeah. where a company makes its money. Again, that is an exploitable opportunity. Okay.